What up, everybody? And welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. And not just the regular episode. This is going to be our WTF is going on in this genre, man. We have a number of topics that we have to, like, talk about because these are huge. Um, the first one, Brian... How are you doing? I'm doing fine. I don't even know what's going Like I said, I don't know what's going on. It's like these studios got together and said, I'm going to do something crazy. And then the other studio said, hold my beer. <laughs> and then I think the one we're going to talk about first was like a thunderbolt out of a clear sky. I, I almost had to question the sources, <laughs> especially now that Twitter, you don't know what the heck is real it's, it's, anymore. It's, what's not? <laughs> so you're like, I'm on Instagram most of the time. I don't really, I'm not really on Twitter that much, but I, I, there's a few individuals that I follow. The nerd, uh, the nerdy basement, um, and a number of others that just, when they start rolling, it's like, oh snap, th this came out of nowhere, Brian. There have been complaints regarding JPEG. This is not coming out of the blue where JPEG has been praised for his leadership. And no, we have known for some time there have been problems. This was enough is enough. Things don't look good now. We don't seem to have a perspective of what the future may hold for us because we don't see any movements happening towards a better situation. Let's call it, yo, this was from, this is not like something they've been thinking about for months. This, <laughs> this is, this happened like this on a, I think it was a Friday meeting. They called him on Friday and they asked him to come back for two years. And they said, you got to train this dude. We can't have it like last time. You got you to train this dude. This dude got to go to sleep in the same house, everything. Right? Brian, what did you, what, what's your interpretation of all this? Well, you, you said it. This is the snap. Is this... <laughs> This mofo is going to snap <laughs> this company and destroy half of it. Is I'm telling you, that's what's going. The crazy thing about this, we're talking about Disney, obviously. We're talking about Bob Chapek <laughs> out, Bob Iger back after a year in retirement. But the board just gave Bob Chapek a three year deal. They gave him a pay raise. That happened months ago. Not you. Yeah, that didn't yeah, happen yeah, like yeah. a long time. That, happened. that I know just I happened. I was looking to see, and I'm like, yo, they just gave this dude a Two contract. quarters ago. Two yeah. quarters ago. So in six months, they went from saying, we are on board with the executive and creative direction of Disney, the corporation, to panic move, he's out, and the old man is back at age 71. And Iger, <sighs> who wrote a book, it's been pretty visible, but there was talk of him like being, I mean, I'm, I'm out in the desert. There's talk of him being in the owner, one of the ownership bids to buy the Phoenix Suns out here. And like, nah, he's, he's rolling it back. Now, I think you hit on it. Bob Iger pretty much had a Hall of Fame run in his 15 years as the CEO of Disney. Mm -hmm. What's happened under Chapek, certainly in the public relations arena, has probably sullied that legacy a little bit because Iger picked Chapek. This was his pick. This was not a collective. This was a, a vote of one to zero that gave Bob Chapek the CEO role. So this is probably as much sort of a, an ego trip to kind of fix the one thing that is now kind of tarnishing that legacy, which is a successor. No. But I also think it means a lot <clears throat> for what you and I talk about every week. Big ramifications, I think, that are coming for Marvel, for Star Wars, for Disney+, Plus, for all the things that we've been talking about. 
and let's go pros and cons because I don't think it's like unanimous either way, but it's change and change is coming the next two years. Is the conversation you have with Kevin Feige easy or hard? I think it's a net win because so I actually want so Chapek has been on the job for 24 hours and there was a he put out a statement and there's a quote in there that I think was very telling. So he said, wait, wait, Bob, uh, sorry, Iger? Bob Iger. Okay, sorry, I'm going to okay, get, okay, okay, get okay. this wrong a million times. Bob and Bob. <laughs> Bob out, Bob in. So Bob Iger, <laughs> quote, they're going to work. So he's going to work together across the head of the studio, ESPN, blah, blah, blah on a Disney's new structure that puts more decision-making back in the hands of our creative teams. So who's number one on that list? Who is number one? Who, who brings in? It, it's Kevin Feige. It's Marvel. That's the number one person or, or group on the list of creative teams. How can you read that any other way? Yeah. Yeah. It implies but, JPEG was meddling, right? It implies, which we knew, we heard rumors that JPEG yes. and Feige didn't see eye to eye. This release to me confirms that. Yeah. And Kevin Feige, like, I love this too much to leave, but I'm dipping my toes to see where else I can possibly, you know, go to do it the way I've been doing it without the meddling listen i think if wb had a house in order i think kevin feige would actually would've, have stayed on the bounced. phone would have stayed on the phone i think he would have bounced wb was in such disarray <laughs> that i think he understood the grass was not greener and he hung up the phone when they called yeah, a couple yeah, weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. but so what do you think is the direction they'll be heading is it going to be yo bob back to the way we used to do it right yeah and that's it i think there's a lot of that i look you and i have been i feel like we've been at the, at the vanguard of the why aren't people calling out disney for hammering marvel to put out substandard stuff and like we're seeing marvel suffer we're seeing that impact at the box office not enough to make them unprofitable but certainly enough to make films that should have been slam dunk billion dollar projects slip to like 800 million i think the number one thing that's going to come out of this is a reduction in content there is already a major cost cutting program coming and i think kevin feige's number one thing going to bob Iger would be yo my see my plate i can't i can't do this to the level that we need to do it we have to edit this down spread it out make different choices about how much we're putting out on the different platforms that i this, i can't see any other outcome than less shows fewer films and an emphasis on better quality the way we were quality, getting it baby that's three. it that's what it, yo, when you watch shows such as Andor, once again, I'm going to reiterate, this show is amazing. My wife binged it all. She's caught up in, in a couple of days. I told, I told her, the rules, watch the first three, then continue. That's right. That's how we got to the marvelousness. Yeah. The spectacular, the cheering in the crowds. We got there by doing something, you know, with with love and care, man. Not just that Boeing. You ever seen that Boeing on uh documentary on uh on Netflix? Yeah, actually I have. Yeah. Come in, crank him out. Forget that. Skip this. Let's just yep. get him out there. Tragedy. Yeah. That's what you get. Listen, I mean, Iger is the guy who was responsible for acquiring Marvel for acquiring Star Wars, 
So he understands, right? And he had the foresight to see. Those are, I mean, those deals are home runs. They have paid for themselves many times over. So he understands the value when you start to destroy and fray something like that. He, those are his babies. He is not yes. going to let those go to waste. Yes. But Brian, the elephant in the room, Brian, we can't say that about Fox. True. We cannot say that about Fox. We, How much did we spend? By the way, I'm throwing our hats in a... Hey, Marvel, if you want to hire us, we here. We here <laughs> to talk about this all day, all night, right? And make some paper doing it. Hey, we're here. Anyway, they spent what seventy billion dollars on this, right? Seventy one, whatever. Yeah. We, what did we want from that, Brian? What did we want from that? X Men. And we wanted our stuff back. Yeah. That was the goal to get we oh yeah, that we, we'll take that too. Right? We're not we haven't mutants is not coming for a minute. That may be a good thing though. Yes, I agree. Right, at, right as we stand today, that may be a better thing than if they were rushing this. Of course. And this happened in the middle of it. But Brian, we've been saying this for a minute that the, the mutants aren't coming for a minute. It's gonna be a minute, <laughs> right? We've been saying this. Now they get all, we get our little sprinkles. Now it's beginning, but we it can't be boom, boom. We're not gonna see, well, we're not gonna see none of those things right now. It's more likely they're gonna push the timeline on a lot of things, including that, especially that. Man, I, fantastic we, talked about, we talked about phase five and six was already going to get pushed and was already starting to see delays. I think if anything, you're going to see, you know, those empty slots that were in phase six. I think some of those just drop. drop I think yeah. just, and I think it wouldn't shock me if something like Secret Wars was 2028. Like, Iger's not good. Like, here's the thing. He's got a two-year contract. He's going to stay longer than two years. I, I, he can't help. It. He's 71. He's not 90. Yeah. So my guess is he's probably there for at least four to five years, which is enough to rechart all the things he wants to do. I have one big prediction later before we close the show I want to make and and kind of groom it. Here's the reality. If he mm -hmm. needs to find a new successor, two years is not long enough. I'm telling you, two years is not long. You need to see somebody cycle through a lot of different pieces of the business to feel like, all right, that's... The, look, Chapek was with him for a long time and he completely whiffed on his ability yeah. to handle that role. So he is not yeah. going to be like, all right, six months, you're good. Here's the next guy or woman. Not a chance. For so me I and think, Coach. Yeah. I, so I think it's going to be a while. It's going to be a while. Yeah, it's going to be a while. But I think they're going to spread things out. And, they, and, they, and, you know, we talked about it we saw the ham-handed version of this with how David Zaslav went through the catalog, edited stuff, and cut things. You're going to see something similar. It's yeah. just not going to be as publicly messy, I don't think. Yeah. But are you feeling more hopeful or more pessimistic? Hopeful. Have to, right? Like, yeah. A change is coming. We, we, there is no one on this. Brian, I hear it every day. That 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 word that we were definitely afraid of. Fatigue. Yeah. The, the real F word in this show. Yeah. <laughs> what the fatigue is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, it creeps up more and more time. And sometimes, Brian, I ain't gonna fart. I feel it. I feel it. You feel it. To me, you 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 texted me a few things, and we'll bring them in right here. We had this discussion. We feel it when we see product that, even if it's good, we kind of know that the upside is limited. Like the Agatha show. It's nothing. It's nothing. Catherine Hans a, a, a supporting actress legend. Be honest, people. Even if that show hits every mark, 
how good could it really be? Are you really going to feel like you spent six to eight hours of your life watching that? And you're like, I cannot live without this shit. I don't know, man. Versus what if you took those resources and you put it toward making a bigger and better secret invasion? Are you going to, what's going to make you happier? I mean, that's what we're talking about here. Yeah. Like, why? Yeah, it's like secret invasion. Brian, I'm scared for secret invasion. I ain't going to front. I'm afraid that this won't be the, could this, to me, in my opinion, the expectation that I have of secret invasion is mouth open. Like in like in awe of the the reveals that we get of who's who, mm -hmm. right? The surprise, the like, the gasp. That's what I'm waiting for with Secret Invasion. If they don't deliver on deliver on that, Brian, I'm not gonna. This is gonna be yet another failure of a, of such a great storyline not really delivering on 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 those promises that I think fans will enjoy the most. Yeah. So that's what I mean like you look at their lineup and it's like WandaVision was interesting, but do we need a White Vision spin-off? We sure? You know, like we got White Vision and Agatha spin-offs out of WandaVision. Not necessary. Three shows out of that? Yeah, I got you on that, on the Agatha show. The Vision Quest, though I don't like the title, <laughs> sounds interesting, Brian. Well, if it goes to West Coast Avengers, if, if that's how they're going to get to West Coast Avengers, okay. Yeah. But then I go to, like, TV show versus movie, mm -hmm. and then I look at, like, okay, Loki delivered against you know, expectations I didn't have. And I'm, I'm very glad we have that show coming back. Mm -hmm. um, but then, you know, we just reviewed Wakanda Forever and we're kind of Ironheart's TBD. Like, I, you know, She-Hulk, <laughs> you can just go back to our shows. But like, this is <laughs> what I mean. Like, we could, cl we could clean this lineup up a lot. Yeah. And I don't think yeah. anyone would feel like they were really missing a lot of these if they were gone. So I'm, I'm hopeful that's where we head in the future. But like, you know, we're excited for Born Again, 18 episodes, Daredevil coming back. Like, but I don't want that show to be resource constrained. Like, that's yeah. got to have the budget and all forces behind it to make that what it should be. Yeah. I'm telling you, Brian, everybody who worked on this in, in Netflix, come over here, let's talk. Right. Easy. That's an easy decision for me. Let us know in the conversation below what you guys think of these developments. Um, are you excited for uh, the future of the MCU? The future of Star Wars, the future of Disney. I got or two. <laughs> I got huh? two quick I got two quick points on that. Okay, go ahead. So one is Nate Moore was on a podcast recently, said some really yes. stuff about the Marvel creative process. I wanted to put one thing in here. He talked, he used Captain America Civil War as his example, where he talked about how did they get to Civil War, which obviously was a, an excellent film and yeah. really propelled us toward Infinity War and Endgame. And he said that wasn't the original plan. They were doing something much smaller, did have Zemo in it, didn't have Civil War. And he said, Kevin literally popped his head in the room, was like, why don't we do Civil War? And to me, it just illustrated that was slash is Kevin Feige's gift, right? It's the vision to think bigger when everyone else in the room isn't able to quite get there because Nate Moore was like I reread the comic and I'm like we can't do this and then Kevin came in the next day and was like no you're doing it make it work wow 
when he described that, the thing that kept running through my head was that's the kind of thing where you start to lose your magic touch when you're having to be in 20 rooms as opposed to two. Yeah. Like Kevin, that's would be like, if Kevin's gift is the idea and like the connectivity, then that's where if you have a plate that's too full, he would start to misfire. That's just human. He's not yeah, perfect. Yeah, 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 of course. And that's why I felt like, okay, if that's what we're getting back to, our hit rate can go up in terms of the story choices we're making, which ultimately is the number one thing that we got to get straightened out for phase mm -hmm. five and six. Here's my second thing, prediction, big prediction. Okay. Because Iger- Drum roll. He's, he's an empire <laughs> guy. He's an empire builder. Okay. I'm going to predict that Disney buys Paramount before he re-retires. Disney acquires Paramount. Let me make the case why. I've heard it already rumored with Disney by Netflix. I don't see it. The reason why Bob Iger bought, paid for Marvel and paid for Star Wars was established IP. Netflix doesn't have a lot of that. Yeah. But you know who does and is small and is kind of struggling? Paramount, yeah. Star Trek, Mission Impossible. Everything Nickelodeon, Paw Patrol, PJ Masks. You know what you can do with all of those properties? Build rides, make toys, oh, sell yeah. merch. Yeah. I don't know. Does Disney do any of that? <laughs> <laughs> That's my big prediction. Before Iger re-retires, he makes a run at Paramount. And you have a service someday that has all of that in the amusement park, on Disney Plus, and on the big screen. Uh, this is what I gotta put this on Instagram. I ain't gotta put I gotta put some some dollars behind this one, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> now there might be some regulatory questions about that, but I I just that to me is on the board as like it makes one. too much sense. Too much sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think if he's coming back, he is not coming back to just do cost cutting and he's not coming back to just pick. A CEO, you, as you said, you know, the Fox deal, like there's a little TBD there. Like, I think he's going to take one more big swing. I'm going to make a bigger prediction, Brian. All I'm right. Top yours. I'm going to Oprah you. <laughs> <laughs> I just got Gail King. <laughs> um, if that happens, I think others will, will follow suit in pursuing big IP. And here's the prediction. I think either Apple or Amazon is gonna buy DCIP. I don't believe, regardless of James Gunn's fans out there and his artistry with with film because he he is very creative i just don't think they have enough time to build something um as good as the mcu i, I think they'll try brian i don't think they'll get there no. and they won't make another run at it. And they're going to look to sell that. It's going to go for top dollar. I don't think you're wrong about that. And I think Disney would do that deal if they could. I just, I think Warner Brothers would be their cold, lifeless hands before they gave it to Disney. So yeah. I think, right. I think it's going to be one of the other big tech companies who can pay a big cash offer that if and when that comes, that's what it'll oh, be. Yeah. yeah. Ah, Nerd Gen Report. I'm telling you. A lot of a lot of the stuff that we talk about is happens, Brian. Or oh, close to. You know, we're in the ballpark, made a bunch single doubles. We hit a lot of home runs and grand slams, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> um oh, I wanted to. Take us out with this one, Brian. Let's discuss this real quick. There was this guy that I um, I just followed 
on YouTube that he interviewed Nate Moore. And he asked him a very good question. Um, he goes by the name of E-Man's Movie Reviews. And he asked them about the script before Chadwick passed away. Hmm. And the one thing that caught my attention was we've said that the rumor was if Chadwick would have if Chadwick would have been around the 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 the, the, the story would have him would have him uh what was the word that they use um grieve over the time that he's lost being snapped five years has passed right he was going to be introduced to his son in this film hmm. the son was already in this joint so he was gonna come back to what a five-year-old i don't know yeah and that would have been like wow a father figure oh my god that's pretty cool yeah we kind of i guess we saw like the the very light version of that with scott lang right he's, he he comes back and cassie's grown up in that one scene or two scenes we get in, in endgame so in this case would have been more like an infant to a a young boy yeah 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 but this i mean i'm amazed Ryan Cooler was still able to make this movie great, despite some of the other things that P uh, Ryan, you're not the only one that blames others for certain things put in this film. Because it feels that way. And that's a sh I'd be tight if I was Ryan Coogler. Well, that see, this goes to our Bob Iger versus Bob Chapek discussion. That's a that's a perfect example of it right there, which is like under the old regime, would that film have been edited the same way? But that's a, a little, very a good little, question, right? Brian. Like with a little less pressure, maybe to promote Ironheart, even though Kugler wants to, would there would they have looked at it and said, we can save some of that for the pilot? Let's just focus on Namor. Let's focus on Talakan. You never know, but like, there's no question the Disney machine and the Disney plus pressure, which is roy which royally backfired, right? Like two years ago, everyone's streaming is the greatest thing. It's going to be infinite valuation, you know, spend as much as you can on content. The subscribers will come, the profits will come. That model died. And Disney's still cranking the content as if it's alive and well. And that was a major factor as to why JPEG was out is they they were losing too much money on the service even though they were getting the subs they weren't making enough money off yeah, yeah yeah and shout out to tutu for sending me that um i'm hopeful brian so am i let us know in the comment section below what you guys think um uh, hit that like and subscribe button notification bell comment let us know what you guys think about what's going on and we'll see you next time on the nerd gym report